If you are preparing for the level one Google Educator exam, this video is for you. There are some very important updates that you need to know about. Hi, my name is John Selwash. I help teachers and students use Google products in the classroom. Every year I take the level one Google Educator exam and summarize my experience. Here are some important updates about the level one exam. The exam is now 35 multiple choice questions. It is open book and open note, so you can research while you take the exam. The time limit is unchanged, 180 minutes, three hours, and the exam fee still remains to be $10, which is a great deal. Your certification will last 36 months. At the expiration date, you would need to retake the level one test uh, if uh, you want to maintain your certification. Now, what's on the level one test? There's a partial list of products you can see there. Um, most of the common products you would expect are included, you know, Gmail, Calendar, Google Drive, the entire Drive family, but some others you may be less familiar with, such as Google Groups, YouTube, Google Drawing, they're also included on the test. Now, a lot of this remains the same, the focus of the exam, the, the time limit, um, but there are some noteworthy changes in 2022. First of all, there are no longer any exam scenarios. If you are um, hearing experiences from other teachers or reading some outdated information, you may have heard about these scenarios that require you to use Gmail, Drive, Google Docs um, to solve various tasks that is no longer included on the level one test. This test is all multiple choice questions. Now, multiple choice is a vague word. We're going to talk more about exactly what those multiple choice questions look like here in a minute. The reason I believe that Google has eliminated the scenarios is they simply had a hard time updating the test with all of the changes to the products. Um, it's much easier to update the multiple choice questions. Therefore, you will see a lot of new features to your favorite Google products represented on the level one test. So things like new features for Google Meet, Google Classroom, smart chips in Google Docs are included where in the past, Google has had a hard time adding new updates to the level one uh, exam. So some good and some bad uh, things you need to know about that. Google has also uh, relaxed the retesting rules a little bit. Um, if you don't pass the first time, you can take the test again three days later. You can take the test again seven days after that. You can actually take the test up to four times in one calendar year with a small waiting period in between. They have added and removed a few um, tools from the level one test. Google Drawing and Google Meet um, have a lot more questions. Um, they've reduced or eliminated Google tasks uh, from the level one test as well. Now let's talk a little bit more about the questions themselves. Now I'm not here to tell you exactly what's on the test. That would be inappropriate. Uh, but I have written a lot of sample test questions like this one. So um, I write them in the style of questions that you'll see on the test. One um, popular style of question is the select all that apply. So you may get a question like this, happens to be about Google Classroom, and you'll need to check all of the um, answers that are correct. Now, I have some good news. Google does give you a clue at the top of all of these questions, you will see a little hint that will tell you how many correct choices there are for this question. So that can be very uh, beneficial. Um, you just have to figure out which of those are correct. So that's one style of question that you'll get. You'll, you will get a few standard multiple choice questions, and then you'll also get some drag and drop questions. Um, so for this question, you'll have to go through and you know rearrange these. Um, to line up with the appropriate statement. A lot of times you get a list of Google products on the left side and then a list of classroom tasks or responsibilities on the right side. And you have to match the right product to the right um, task for it. Um, again, not a what you would call your typical standard multiple choice question, so you need to be aware of that. You're only being asked 35 questions, but you have a lot more actual answer choices that you have to uh, give for those questions. All right, let's uh, keep moving on and talk some more about the test itself. Um, Google has partnered with a company called Criterion to actually administer the test. So you'll need to register with Criterion, create an account. They collect the $10 exam fee. Um, one important thing I need to make you aware of, um, it can take up to 24 hours 
to actually receive your test credentials. It's typically much faster than that, usually a couple of hours, but it's not the situation where you can just register and then immediately take the test. So you need to plan that in. The other thing you need to know is that you must take your exam within eight days of registering. Uh, and if you wait too long, your exam will expire and then you'll have to repurchase it. This is the email that you'll get with your testing credentials. Um, we'll give you some tips on taking the exam requirements and things like that. As soon as you get this email, you can take your exam. You can take your exam on any laptop, computer, Chromebook, Windows, Mac, whatever you've got. You do not want to use an iPad or mobile device. Um, you want to make sure that you have a stable internet connection. And then one other thing just to be aware of, uh, you do need to take your test on a device with a webcam. Google uses that as a security measure to make sure that the same person uh, takes, uh, sits and takes the exam for the duration um, of the test. Um, this is, you will get instant results. So this is an example of um, the exam result email you'll receive. You should get instant results on the screen and then you'll get this email as well. And uh, you can celebrate when you get that examination successful. The passing rate or passing percentage that's required is 80%. You must score to 80 in order to pass. But we don't know how Google actually scores the test. So when you're asked a question and there are three correct choices, do you get partial credit if you get two of the three correct choices? We don't know. Um, Google has reduced the number of questions on the test. In the past, they've had 50 or more questions. There's only 35, so that does mean the margin for error is smaller. Uh, so you need to be prepared. Uh, shorter doesn't mean easier, as we'll, uh, we'll talk about here in uh, a little bit. Now, I do want to point out something that's kind of cool, and I'm glad Google is doing this. When you get the email and you've successfully passed, you're going to get a link to your secure digital credential. And Google has partnered with uh, a company called Accredible. It's over at credential.net. And that's where they will publish your certificate, your badge. There have been, sadly, some instances where people will just slap the Google Certified Educator badge in their email signature, not having actually earned it. And up to this point, there's never been a way to verify that someone actually does, in fact, have that certification. Well, now with Accredible, that is the case. This uses the blockchain to verify the authenticity of your certification, the um, certificate issuer, and the expiration date. So you can link to this page. This is like a public page. Um, and so anybody who needs to can verify that you are, in fact, the holder of the certificate. So that's pretty cool. That's included. Um, I, I think that's a great move on Google's part. That's a quick overview of um, the exam, the registration process, and uh, what you'll get when you pass. Let's talk a little bit more about the content of the exam, what's actually on the test. Now, I take careful notes when I uh, take the exam to help you know what to prepare for. Now, I'm not here to, again, tell you exactly what's on the test. You need to be prepared. You need to study and know the Google products to pass its examination. But I can give you some insights on where to spend your time. So if you look at this summary, you know, I divide all of the test questions into three categories. We have the Google Drive questions. So that's Drive, Docs, Slide Sheets, Form Sites. We have the uh, communication tools, Gmail, Calendar, Google Meet, and then the classroom tools, YouTube, Search, Classroom, and Chrome. And you can see the division of questions there. Definitely um, an emphasis on Google Drive. So you know, if you were going to study where should you spend your time, I, I would definitely spend it um, looking at Google Drive. Let's take a, a little closer look at these questions. Uh, you can pause the video on this screen if you want and take a closer look. This is a comparison of how many questions I have received on each Google product over the last four years, since 2019. Now, I'm going to highlight a couple of noteworthy things. Um, Google has had a very hard time updating the exam, and one good evidence for that is the lack of questions on Google Meet. Google Meet has changed more than any other Google product in the last few years. Well, now that we're multiple choice, you can see the number of Meet questions has increased. Same thing with Google Classroom. We've had an increase in classroom questions. 
eliminated Google Tasks. Interesting, I, I don't really have an explanation for this, but you know, Google Sheets has gone down. Um, so if you're not a, a spreadsheet person, you can rejoice about that. But uh, drawing has increased. Now, this is just my experience. Google does have a large question bank. So just because I only had one question on Google Sheets does not mean that you're going to only have one question. You may get five. Um, everybody gets a random collection of questions uh, for their particular exam. The time is no longer really a factor. Um, back when there were these scenarios, running out of time was one of the biggest challenges. But now that the exam is down to 35 questions, you really should have more than enough time uh, to complete the entire exam. Um, you can see my time uh, has gone steadily down over the last four years. Now, again, I take this a lot, so I would not expect most people to finish in 20 minutes. Uh, but on average, people are somewhere between one and two hours seems to be um, a good ballpark uh, for planning. Now, shorter does not necessarily mean easier. Um, I have a lot of comments on my previous videos for the level one exam overview. This is one from a teacher who definitely experienced that even though this is a shorter exam, there's only multiple choice questions, it is not necessarily easier. You do need to be prepared. Do not go into this lightly. The questions are challenging. Um, and I've got some tips that I'll share with you next on how to best uh, prepare for the exam. I've prepared a very detailed guide that I'd love to uh, send to you. This is my uh, level one study guide. You can get that over at geducator.com. It has test taking strategies and resources, an entire level one study guide with all the things that you should study in preparation for the level one test. And I have written some sample questions that you can use to test your knowledge of Google products in advance of taking the uh, level one test. So if you're interested, it's free. Head over to geducator.com. A couple of tips for success. If you are taking the exam today or maybe tomorrow, uh, here are some things that I would recommend. Number one, very carefully read each question. This really is a terminology or vocabulary test. So you need to very precisely know what is being asked so you can make the correct answer choices. This is open book, it's open book, open note. Now, I will admit Google does not explicitly say, do whatever you want on the test. But if you read through the terms of service for the exam, there is absolutely no mention of restrictions related to accessing other resources, having other tabs open, having a second device. The only restriction that they place during your exam is that you're not allowed to save or capture the questions. So Google doesn't want you to like screenshotting and then sharing them with your friends or using screenshots from other people to um, successfully pass the exam. Other than that, you can look things up. Um, it's not a big deal. There's no restrictions, no special uh, extensions uh, or exam software that you have to install for taking the test. There are clues on the questions. Uh, we already talked about this. This is an actual screenshot from the exam interface. Um, and at the top of the um, question, you'll see a little hint that'll say select one, select two. So just use that to your advantage. Google provides it. Um, so you can use it. This is the webcam uh, that you'll see. Your webcam stays on throughout the test. Um, and they're just using facial recognition to make sure that the same person is sitting in front of the computer taking the test for the entire time. So no, you cannot send me 10 bucks and ask me to take the exam for you. Uh, I'm not available. One other interesting thing that I've observed is you need to be aware of the drag lag. So on the drag and drop questions, there is an annoying lag that occurs from the time that you click on an object and then try to move it to when it actually moves. And the first few times when I was taking the test, I thought that my screen had frozen um, and that something was wrong. Just be patient. It will work. It will move as you drag it. You just have to wait another extra second uh, for it to kind of catch up with you. So um, that's normal. Once you kind of get used to it, you'll uh, use it. But the first couple of questions can be a little uh, concerning. If you have any problems or issues during your test, technical issues, um, you can fill out this support form. I will link uh, the support form in the description for this video if you need to access it. Sadly, I have filled out the support form and not received a response. Hopefully, Google has increased uh, their support capacity for those who have challenges and they will respond to it. But just be aware, it's not a fast process. 
Um, and this is, to my understanding, the only way to contact Google if you have challenges with your exam. Good luck on your level one test. Just do it. You can study for the rest of your life, but I would encourage you just to take it and see what happens. Uh, I would love to know how you, what your experience is. Certainly drop me a comment and let me know what your experience is with the level one test. If you are preparing to take the level two exam, check out this video up here and you can learn all about the level two test. And if you'd like to download my free study guide, you can click the link down at the bottom.